They've infiltrated your drawings, and they're at the tip of your pencil. Could they be killing you, or your art at least? And are your children at risk? It's not that dramatic. Don't take lines away from your kids. It's a tricky thing because we use lines to create art, but if we rely too heavily on them, they can actually hamper our artistic growth or work against the things that we're trying to draw. For example, let's say that I draw a constructed shape like two cylinders crossing over each other. Now because these are two 3D shapes, we can use contour lines to define their surface even though we're drawing on a 2D page. Now if I wanted to draw this intersection between these two cylinders, maybe the worst thing that I could do is draw a straight line down the middle that connects at both ends because now I've inaccurately defined this area as having a straight line in there or somehow being cut in half. These round shapes show the actual contour, and to be aesthetically pleasing and show what we want to, we might stop these lines before they touch on either side so that we don't confuse what's what. This is using shapes and construction to our advantage instead of letting lines control the show. So I have a few practical examples to show you using some submissions from the patrons at the Novice Bard tier. This isn't like past critique roundup videos. All of the art that you'll see in this video, the person has already gotten a personal video from me on, and they've opted to show their work or have it shared for everyone's benefit. That isn't a necessary step for the critiques. So for one, obviously remember that our goal is always to grow and learn, not tear each other down. We're all in different steps of the artistic journey, and the comments are usually good about that. And also, there are other things that these folks might need to be focusing on in order to keep growing and learning, and I've probably already addressed those to them. This is just to use their work as examples to benefit you. You can get a personalized video of your own over at patreon.com slash bageldenizen at the novice bard tier. There's also a few days left to get Biko's backpack for April, Biko's party takes over. But if you aren't interested in Patreon at all, there's expedited critiques and one-on-one -on -one sessions available over on Brooks com slash shop. Also, as a reminder, May 9th and 10th, I'll be hosting a stream all weekend long at twitch.tv slash bageldenizen instead of having a booth at a local Comic-Con. We're bringing the booth digital, and I have a lot of plans in store. So I want to start here with Jonathan's work because his goal here is to hit that simplified, limited animation TV style. But even when things are simplified, we can still get betrayed by lines. So here are three different areas where it's happening. Uh, with this dynamite stick character, remember that when we draw shapes and lines, we're creating a visual hierarchy of what objects are in front of what. So looking at this character, it's almost like this is a cut in half cylinder, right? Like we were talking about earlier, same, same here. And the eye is then behind that in on both sides. And so the way things are intersecting, it's a little confusing. Um, this is a little redraw that I did, not trying to make any new design decisions, but building it out as a cylinder first, uh, and then appending the eyes onto the outside of them, treating all three pieces like their own 3D shapes. Now, next, the bodies of these characters. They're very simple, but because there isn't any definition in here, and the legs start coming out of the bottom of the torso, really far down, and the lines make it look like these legs are pasted over top of the body. So a revision here, legs start on the side of the hips, and using that visual hierarchy, closest leg is visually the highest. So here, then the body, then the leg. And we also add a segment in the torso so that the bean shape is much clearer. And finally, this pizza character. Uh, this is really cool, there's some cool poses here but it's tricky to have legs coming out of the end of a point, and the way that the lines make a hard cutoff between these two points is also tough. So we see here the, there's just a straight line between these two. And also considering the fact that this slice of pizza is likely a very flat or almost cardboard thickness character makes it a little bit difficult as well. So I provided two options here. One of them resembles the way that a pizza costume on a human drapes until the end of it covers over the front of the legs here. And the arms are also coming out of the back of it as well. Uh, the idea here being that you can sort of see the human body inside of the costume. But the second option that I did here is where the legs actually come out of the front of the slice and the end of the slice becomes coattails, sort of like a little gentleman Monopoly Man character. And the arms here too are coming out of the edge of the slice where we actually curve the slice around a little bit at the edges, like a curved phone screen, 
and that way they don't originate out of the side of a flat surface. So the head on top, we want to avoid what's called tangents, where one line can be interpreted as part of two different things. Tangents aren't always bad, they can be employed to do a lot of things, but when they're accidental, they're, they're mostly confusing. So with the hat, we cut in far enough into the crust to show that there are two separate objects here, and that's a concept that we'll get into more with the next few examples. So here we have Kaylin's work, and Kaylin is a nurse, by the way, so we hope she's doing well right now. We appreciate her work. Uh, Evan, whose work is coming up soon, is a nurse as well, so we appreciate both of them and what they're doing. A different way that lines can work against you is actually when we try to use them in a different way of drawing. So let me explain that. Usually when it comes to comic and animation art, we tend to use this constructive form of drawing. That's basic, simple anatomy shapes, basic, simple 3D shapes, so that we can reproduce things like the human form quickly and consistently. And when you get construction down, you can make lots of things from the same basic shapes. It's almost like sculpting or working with Lego. A different form of drawing is what we call realism, or realistic drawing. And that's like if you've ever done a still life, say of a piece of fruit, and you're, you're basically trying to imitate a camera. And a camera it doesn't care about bone structure, uh, it doesn't care about anything like that, it just cares about what's light and what's dark. And so we tend to employ these little sort of hatchy lines sometimes when we're just starting to learn how to do realistic drawing or maybe we're trying to create the shadow in our piece with these little sketch lines. And kind of like what Kalen's done here, the obstacle that presents itself though is that we can't sculpt out those shapes. Uh, you only have these little hatching lines. So practicing and understanding those 3D shapes, but also starting to get an understanding of what looks believable for humans uh, might look something like this, this quick little draw over here. And you can incorporate gesture as well, but you're creating shapes and not lines. And that's kind of the key difference here and something really that's one of the main points of this video. Kaylin, by the way, has this tiny amount of time to work on art in her schedule, so there's really great progress happening here. Moving forward to Evan, we again go back to some of the same ideas about tangents and a little sub-idea about lines down here. This sketch is something we want to be careful of because we can make tons and tons of lines and somewhere in that is an approximation of the real thing, but we need to be able to be okay with making one or two sketch lines. Recognize that they're wrong and learn from that. In this case, maybe make that sketch, make a decision, right? When we make a decision, we eliminate a choice that we didn't make and then start a new sketch next to it. And you'll have made the same amount of lines, just separate from each other and giving yourself an opportunity to learn. In Evan's case here, we have some areas where uh, consistent noses or jaws aren't quite following the visual hierarchy in a way that makes it necessarily dimensional or maybe appealing. Uh, this boar's snout is protruding forward, but it reads as moving downward. And we're also getting a, a lot of the face on the side here as well. So my revision here treats that snout as a big piece of geometry coming off the front and what that looks like from a three quarter or front view. In these next two human characters, we wanna make sure that the face isn't flat, that we represent the ocular bones around the eye, and that we remember in general terms that the eyes are recessed into the head, that keeps them protected. The nose, unless it's just straight on or too small itself, will almost always cover a portion of the far eye, and that the mouth and jaw are protruding forward on the face. So here are some changes that I made along those lines. Uh, there was some areas along the edge of this face here where instead of just being a round end of the face there, it is helpful to cut in to show those ocular bones, show part of the eye on the side there. And one of the things in Evan's case here is instead of just using lines to define the nose, uh, it will suit him to study noses and the geometry of noses. They're a very complex shape at first to figure out, but then once you realize that they're sort of these very simplified blocks with interesting little planes depending on what kind of nose you have, that'll help you to build your character's noses forward, make them look interesting instead of just something that you sort of have to add on, and prevents them from being those lines that might flatten part of the face if you're not careful. Finally, one more example here with Godal, uh, specifically in the waist region of their character. It's so easy to let the belt, the pants, the coat, the shirt, all merge together in this sort of tangent area. 
but breaking them apart into their own individual pieces uh, enough that they can be separate is going to create a lot more appeal and help it when you start to move and rotate your character, pose them, and put them into action. Hopefully this helps you to treat lines as tools and as such realize that they can be dangerous when mishandled, just like a chainsaw. You can get a critique of your own on Patreon or brookseggleston.com shop. May 9th and 10th, mark your calendars for a big old weekend of digital Comic-Con goodness over on twitch.tv slash bageldenizen. We've got new announcements, surprises, new videos, sales, and stuff like that. Biko's Backpack is a monthly collection of new original art delivered right to your mailbox, and you can get that over at patreon.com slash bageldenizen at the Biko's Backpack tier. The way things are now, that is the best way to support the channel if you want to see more here. You can check out more from me on Twitter and Instagram at Bagel Denizen. Thank you for watching, and have fun creating. <laughs>